<laughs> Welcome to episode four of the famous podcast. I just I see I he faded lost into a myself. Bit. Well, I, no, I faded into oh, like a transition. Yeah. <laughs> Episode four, and it is also the Halloween episode, everybody. We're about to get spooky, scary skeletons. Oh, that song is one yeah. of my favorite songs from Halloween. Like, I don't know where that started. TikTok, maybe? But I'm obsessed with it. If you're listening to the podcast, we're going to just talk about this briefly because we don't want you to feel left out. No, 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 no. There is an elephant in the room right now, and... Me and, <laughs> me and Tim are, are dressed up for the occasion. You're really missing out. I kind of don't want to tell you about it just to get you to watch the YouTube video, but, you know, we're all inclusive. Yeah. So I may be dressed like a Michelin Man chicken. Yeah. Like my mom's rooster. Emph- emphasis on the Michelin Man. Yeah. I, see, mine doesn't have a fake tummy and yours does. So he kind of has an excuse to look a little bit frumpy sitting yeah. down, but I, I, it's just me. So be nice. Thank you very much. I will maybe at some point in the episode clock. Oh, can we can we get a little preview now? Just like okay, hold on. I gotta get in the right like headspace. We won't judge you on this clock. I gotta like, become Stuart. Maybe down the line. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I, I said. I, would, I said. I said I wouldn't judge you. <laughs> Is it not good? I feel like it was pretty realistic. I feel like if they didn't know what they just clicked on they would assume it was like a farm yeah like, like 10 minutes straight of chicken coop old mcdonald had a farm i am mario which i know a lot of people say mario but up in new york we say mario or at least i do i don't know i i'm just like a little chubby italian and i just feel like i, I channel mario you definitely give off mario we have the same Fives. exact body type, the same build. Who? Me, me oh, you and Mario. They yeah. were about to say me. I was like, okay. I mean, I have a little bit more of an ass cheek moment. Yeah. But <laughs> double cheeked up. I'm just like short, round, you know, Italian. It, it's just it felt right. I had to be Mario. And audio listeners, go over to YouTube and you'll you'll be able to watch this. Yeah, I really feel like this might be one time where you might miss out a little bit. I feel like we're going to try and do a really good job to make sure that no matter where you're listening, you feel loved and included and not left out of anything. These are pretty good costumes. They are. And I was... Party City. No, the padding built in really, believe it or not, like, yeah, it makes me look a lot more round and a lot more fat, but I feel so much more confident with it because it's like, it's where it's does like, the real st- stomach start? I feel so much more confident. Like, I think I might start walking around with like a pillow. Maybe much. that's why I'm confident. Maybe. Maybe because... I just assume that everyone could think I'm pregnant. Yeah. They might not know if it's real, like a fat suit. That, with the fact that it's like a Halloween episode, hearing that, like, just scared the shit. Dobby. Oh, no, that's Harlow. God. Sam's cat just literally knocked on the door. I about cracked. Oh, her head's coming out from underneath. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm sorry, taking this mustache off. I'm sorry. I have I to. I don't blame you. Like, I want you to keep it on because I want you just to commit to the bit. But I don't know that I could. Could I try? Yeah. I'm just actually curious. I think I could do it. No, I couldn't. Th- no, it, it makes me, like, I feel so much more free. I can make facial expressions now. Everybody, the podcast just started. Party has just begun. We actually should address the fact that it's 2.30 in the morning. Oh, did we? Yeah. We just have not let them know <laughs> that little tidbit, which makes sense considering it is Halloween. And we are going to be getting a little bit spooky in this episode. But that just always happens with me and you. Yeah, no, we get nothing done. It, I think it's like two ADHDers, but like serious ADHDers together in a room. N- nothing's going to happen until 2.30 a.m. That's just how it is. And the the best part is we took, oh, we had a lot of caffeine. We did have a lot of caffeine. Right before we started filming this, Which, so we're never going to sleep. No, that probably was a really bad idea because I have recently learned that when I ingest caffeine, I get crippling anxiety. Yeah. To the point where I I think that the world is crashing down and the FBI is coming to get me. So I don't know what you're going to have to deal with later when we're trying to go to sleep. But I'll make sure that you get no sleep if I get no sleep. Very. I'm such a good friend. Um, Today we we got some some fun things planned for you guys. We're going to read some of your spooky, scary stories later. Mm -hmm. Um, We're obviously going to update you guys. I mean, come on, it's famished. That's what we do. That's just what we're good at. Rate your favorite holidays, like, in order. But, like, the main ones. Like, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, Easter. Like, rate them in order from best to worst. 
Christmas is best. Yeah. You can't beat Christmas. You can't beat Blogmas. No. I don't give a shit about Thanksgiving and Easter. Oh, see, I love. I couldn't care less. Like, I'm a Christian, but I couldn't give a shit less. Really? No. I guess. We never had traditions. Okay, I guess Easter's really big for Italians. Okay. Too. But, like, I mean. uh, The Pope. Everything's big for Italians. Yeah. Or is the Pope Roman? Same thing. Rome is in France, in Italy. You didn't just say France. I, I, I really almost did for a second. Caught myself. Doesn't count. Okay. I what what else is there other than Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter? Halloween. <laughs> oh, Halloween second, I guess by default. Okay, so just say you don't like holidays. I don't really just like admit holidays. It. No, I love my oh. Actually, ask me my favorite holidays so I can sound like a good person. Go ahead. What's your favorite holiday? Other people's birthdays. That's not a holiday. No, it is. No, that doesn't count. Your I think birthdays okay. are a holiday. They're the best holidays. You just celebrate the people in your life that actually matter. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not, but it's not necessarily a holiday. You don't consider your birthday a holiday? No. Okay, well, that settles the debate. I'm more narcissistic than you. <laughs> I think that Christmas is by far my favorite, specifically Christmas Eve. Is my all-time favorite. But again, kid, that's an Italian. Yeah. That really is an Italian thing. Christmas Eve. You can't beat Christmas Eve as a kid. No. And then I would say, thanks. no, yeah, 100% then Thanksgiving. That's huge in my family. That's insane to me. Huge. That is insane. No. And then um, Easter, then Halloween. Like, the fall time is my favorite time, but Halloween is just, I don't, you know... Why don't we have better holidays to pick from? Yeah, this is really making me realize there's not many, There's like, some shitty holidays. Well, what about St. Patty's Day? I've never celebrated it before, yeah. but for some reason in my head, it's still higher than Thanksgiving. Black Friday. Black Friday's fun. I prefer Black Friday over Halloween. I mean, over Thanksgiving. I get to buy things. It feels like a celebration. It's like a mini Christmas. Like, what's your best Halloween memories? Growing up, I loved trick-or-treating. Well, yeah. And when I say growing up, I mean I did it until, until I... Until, like, college, me too. Yeah. I wouldn't stop trick-or-treating. I always had an excuse to no, trick-or-treat. Same. I lived in a really small town, so there was, like, ten of us that went trick-or-treating. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's gonna be hard. All the houses are so far apart. You just walk a couple miles. Oh, no. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the full candy bucket. And it wasn't like you got one piece of house. Oh. You got mounds. Oh, that's very different. See, I grew up only until I was six in Staten Island, where all the houses are on top of each other. Like, cars park in the driveway, and the asses of the car literally stick into the street. Were because, there lots of people? Oh, oh my God. It was, in, it was so festive, though. Like, everyone was out. It was crazy. We would fill pillowcases and pillowcases of candy. Was it a competition? No. Of, like, who had the best costume? Yes. Okay, same. Yeah, and my mom always, always, she was so creative. She always went above and beyond and made all my costumes. Like, one year I was Elvis. Elvis? I but can like, see that. But like she did my hair like Elvis. Like everything was Elvis. I Aww. was. We love a supportive trick-or-treating mom. I She was doing it for her. It was like selfish. I, like, that would be me as mom. Yeah, she was She was like really going all out. She was doing too much. But I looked good. Same. But I just bought mine from the store. Okay. Like Texas toast. Texas toast? Well, I didn't buy that from the store actually. My friend's mom made it, I think. Or maybe her. Can we get some context to this Texas toast? Well, you see, I think her mom and dad were a sandwich for Halloween once. And they were like the bread pieces. So she just had these two large styrofoam bread slices that your head stuck out the top of and your arms stuck out the sides and your feet came at the bottom. Just for some visual context. Right. And we didn't want to just be two pieces of bread. That's boring. So we decided to become Texas Toast. And we wore like a little hat, like a cowboy hat, a sheriff pin, a little like bandana. Wait, that's hilarious. See, that's my, like this day and age older, like that's funny. Like last Halloween, I was, I'm going to let you finish, but last Halloween, I was the school bus that hit Regina George. That was iconic. Yeah. So like I got a whole entire like school bus outfit and I got like a blonde wig and I like taped it to the front, like put a little blood. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That was a big brain moment. Yes. Well, so was the Texas toast. I really don't think that was my idea. I don't want to take credit. I think that was her idea. Oh yeah. But it's still like, it's not like you saw it on TV show. No, 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 no. She came up with it. It's original. My idea with the Texas Toast costume, which can show you how my brain works, is um, I told us that we were going to do the polar, like I signed us up to do the polar plunge. 
in the Texas Toast costumes because it was going to get us into the newspaper, and that was a big deal. And you couldn't move your arms or legs in these costumes. They were foam, too. So we jumped into the lake in the, the foam costume that which acted like a sponge, like a sponge and absorbed, well not freezing, I mean, literally freezing cold. This was like in December in Wisconsin. And it absorbed all of the water. There was like six men that came up and had to like hurl us out of the water. And they had to like rip it off of us because it got so heavy. We, could, I, we couldn't get ourselves all out. All I could think about is how you're exaggerating and showing. Because she said it was December, everybody, but it was her Halloween costume. She exaggerates. Well, no, 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 no. I made us wear it again. Oh. I said, well, because we wanted to, they had a contest. You had to dress up. Oh. Everyone was in different costumes for I the like, polar punch. I was like, okay, Tana Mojo. People could vote on whoever had the best costume, but you voted with like money, I believe. So it was like donating. So whoever got the most money for how good their costume is when they jumped in got to be the newspaper. Did you make it? Yeah. See, no, that was clever. See, I came, I came in second for my school bus costume. But like that, that's fun. Like one year, like my brother was a banana tree. Like he dressed up as a tree and hung bananas from it. That is so niche. Like it's, that, that <laughs> I love niche costumes. Yeah, that is, I like that. Since we're on the topic of spooky. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I think it's time for us to have a little bit of fun. How are we going to do that? Ooh. How do I, <laughs> I keep thinking I have to sing the segment intros in like different voices. Give it so a go. here's one today. I'm going to sing it in the chicken voice. Oh. I'm mad and so Halloween edition. Okay. That's what I think a chicken sounds like. Singing. Was, like with the mic. No, that was good. So these are stories from Reddit. It's a Reddit thread. Am I the asshole? I do know that there is a podcast where girls say like, am I the asshole? And they're reading these crazy stories. I don't know if this is from a, a specific thread or what this is from. Give us ideas. If there's any other way that we can word, am I the asshole for these? Let us know. Because I love reading these. It's so fun. I love judging. Okay. In a respectful way. Right. You know? Are you ready? Yeah. This is a hefty paragraph. Stay with me here. I live in a large neighborhood, about 90 houses. We are what's considered the rich neighborhood. Okay. So our neighborhood has always been a hot spot for trick-or-treaters. Guilty. I always would look up <laughs> where, like, the expensive houses were, like, where all the doctors lived. Oh, yeah. To go oh, with the yeah. full-size candy bars. There, there, yes, there's an area in my um, town where we would always go. Like, watch, like, this is the city that I grew up in. Oh. <laughs> we used to get about 70 to 1,000 kids a year. That's a lot. That's quite the range. I've, oh, oh it says 700 to 1,000. Oh, I was <laughs> I'm so say. sorry. 700 to 1,000 kids a year. Oh. I haven't seen Halloween like this in years. With this when people on the streets? Yeah. It's kind of like a... I'm used to the drives now. It's kind of like a ghost town lately. <laughs> that was really Mario of you. Okay. That was really cringy. I thought that was a good uh, joke. I've always loved getting trick-or-treaters because my kids are teens now and they don't trick-or-treat anymore. But in the last four years, it's gotten ridiculous. There's thousands of kids and their parents flooding the streets, people with hay in their rigs carrying their kids around trampling yards, littering candy wrappers everywhere, and the amount of small children walking around by themselves is appalling. This is honestly bizarre to me because something that's like really upset me like in the recent years is the fact that I feel like no one, especially with like the social media age, I feel like no one is out on Halloween anymore and often it's like just deserted. Like, yeah, is it trick-or-treating a thing anymore? No, it really, sometimes, like, I will drive around on Halloween and not even realize it's Halloween until, like, 4 p.m. So, like, where is this town? Is that because of COVID, though? No, even before that. I'd say, like, the past, like, five years. Really? Yeah. I think where I grew up, there isn't a lot going on. So when trick-or-treating comes around, you don't miss it. Okay. Like, that is the event of the century. Yeah, that makes sense. And they have certain hours that it goes till it doesn't stop at there. Oh. And people will just get tired of sitting out, so just leave everything on the porches. Or maybe they have the trick-or-treating, like, at events instead of walking around the neighborhood because how are you supposed to walk around right. miles and miles and miles yeah. and miles of places? People from the neighboring town of 30,000 take their kids to my neighborhood. I was annoyed, but I never really did anything about it until two years ago. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Dramatic. My daughter tripped and broke her arm. We didn't think it was a break, but we wanted to go to the ER anyway to get it checked out. 
and there were so many people in our neighborhood, we couldn't get out. There were cars everywhere, lining the streets, parked in people's yards. It was horrible. We had to wait until everyone left about 1 a.m. Where is this? I don't know. It's popping though. To go to the hospital. My daughter had to wait in pain for hours. See, she said it. At that point, I was done. I contacted the neighborhood community and we managed to get some folks, cops mostly, to stand at the gate with a list and only let in certain people. Folks that live here, family members, friends. If you wanted to get in, you had to be close to someone in the neighborhood. It was great. And there were only about 300 kids in the neighborhood. That still seems like so many. Okay, I know where this is. This has to be Texas. Oh, I can see this that. This has got to be North Texas. Like I rich, can see that. Rich Texas. Okay, yeah. I can I get that vibe. There were only about 300 kids in the neighborhood. And after that, there was barely any trash. And we're doing it again this year. I recently told my sister what I have done, and she got really angry. When we were kids, we had to trick-or-treat in other neighborhoods because we lived in a trailer park with no other kids. She told me I was a horrible person for ruining thousands of kids' Halloween. But honestly, I'm not too broken up about it. It was a hazard. If there was a fire or an emergency, no one would be able to get in to help. When I was a kid, there was never any cars lining the streets. The residents could get out if they wanted. It was never dangerous. I don't think I'm in the wrong, but I've always respected my sister's opinion. Am I the asshole? Well, yeah, like you're a <laughs> but <laughs> no, yeah. A Karen. Of course, though. I mean, is it an asshole thing to do? Yes. Did someone probably have to be the asshole at some point? Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, own it. Like, but what was going on in the neighborhood? Like, are we sure that was trick-or-treaters? That, like, so many people came that you couldn't walk? Yeah, no, that's giving, like, no. That's giving, like, um, riot. It could, yeah, it also is giving, like, Atlanta, Georgia, maybe they filmed Stranger Things there. Oh, yeah. That's you know what I mean? One. Like, I don't know why so many people would be in one neighborhood, but I feel like it's just one of those situations. Are you, do you do this too? Like, I'm a very, like, visual person, so as you're, like, as you were reading it, I'm all I'm picturing, picturing is my town at home. The one okay. that, like, that's all I'm, so I'm oh, picturing the houses there. I that like, many people in my town. I was trying to make it through you know when you get picked out or did sorry. you black out yeah like when, when you're in school and someone picks on you to popcorn raid okay. and you just have to focus on making it through the paragraph being sure like you don't get embarrassed by like yes. the words you can't pronounce yes or stuttering even on though them. Like, mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter but the kids will pick on you and make you feel like you're stupid yeah yeah that's what i was trying to do so okay. you were picturing like a nice little family halloween trip i'm fighting for my life oh yeah it's no, fine I get though you're an asshole, but someone had to do it, and it was you. So I applaud you. Be proud of you. Own it. Yeah. Like you just said, if you're gonna do it, do it, but do it with like a loud chest, mm-hmm. and don't be ashamed. You're an asshole, but you <laughs> you probably saved other people's lives. And thank you for watching our podcast. I don't think these people watch us. Oh, this is Reddit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're. A <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. I was raised in a super strict Christian household where Halloween was the devil's holiday and not celebrated at all. My parents would turn the lights off and put a sign on the door that we didn't have candy. But what does trick-or-treating have to do with that? Yeah, I don't... Like, why do you have to, like, not give the kids candy? Yeah, that... Whatever. I have a younger brother, and they still do this. I had to spend the evening reading. That part, I didn't mind. I love reading. And listening to all the other kids outside. Eventually, it stopped bothering me because after years of ignoring it, it kind of just faded out of my mind. I just don't have the drive to do anything Halloween-related. Fast forward to now, I'm married with three kids. My husband loves Halloween. He loves masks and dressing up. When we had our first child, he asked me if I wanted to come and I declined. I spent the night reading. Second child is born and the cycle repeats. Same for the third. I don't actively discourage celebration of Halloween in the house. I just have no drive or desire to participate. I've been to a few friends' Halloween parties, but they just felt like regular parties to me. I didn't dress up. I have several friends that go all out for this holiday, like buying fog machines and everything. That's me. Yeah, that's your friend. And I just can't muster up any excitement. My husband asked me recently if I wanted to try something this year, and I just don't. He seems really bummed about this, and I feel like something is wrong with me. Am I the asshole for essentially being a killjoy during the spooky season? 
Um, I don't think you're an asshole, but I do think that sometimes for our family, we got to do things we don't want to do to make them happy. And sometimes you just got to suck it up. If it's something that's not, it's not causing any harm. And I feel like if you felt a certain way about it religiously, then obviously you shouldn't force yourself to do that. But by the sound of that, it wasn't that she didn't like Halloween or like she agrees with it. It's more just like... You're just being an asshole. That's what I'm saying. Is You're just like... (laughs) she's saying, oh, I don't have feelings towards it, so I'm not going to include myself. But, like, in my mind, there's a lot of things that we might not be excited to do with our family or our yeah. partners, but you do them, like, for the memories. And also, like, the, the I mean, the question is, am I the asshole? So clearly there's got to be an asshole, and that it surely true. ain't your kids or your husband. That is, that's actually a good point. Yeah, so... Like, no one's saying you're bad, but maybe don't be the Debbie Downer. A little bit of a hole. Which, I maybe. don't know, maybe that's a controversial way of me to think about that. But you're saying, religiously, you don't see the issue with it. Yet, you don't want to go. Yeah. And Grant said, I'm the first one to stay home and read a book and crochet. We went out recently. All I did the entire time was beg to go home to his couch to crochet my first ever sweater. Yeah. And he, I may have made him drink my drinks. It was just... It was bad, but, you know, I still went for the experience, and you should try it sometime. Yeah, you got to give it a try. You got to give it a go. For your family. For your family. Don't be an asshole, because you are being one. Yeah. A nice asshole. How do you not offend people? Well, she's from Reddit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that is true. It's about that time. What? Spooky. Is this your intro for... The next segment? It's the intro to the intro for the next segment. Okay. Let's... Okay. I really genuinely hope all of you believe or feel in your bones that you are just hanging out with your two best friends at your Halloween slumber party. Yeah. And because uh, it's four in the morning. If the ener- Yeah. If the energy is a little bit off, it is four in the morning. And also, I just give myself... Massive anxiety. Uh huh. So <laughs> Sam's kind of uh, taking the reins. Uh-huh. That's Sam's, okay. I'm not giving much after I'm just that. Leading you through. I expended all my energy on that. I will say this next segment is from you guys. We asked you guys for your spooky Halloween stories. I myself have had a lot of creepy things happen to me, and I, for the longest time, wouldn't even say I believed in ghosts. Yeah. Or the paranormal. I am a Christian, so I do believe that there is something after we die. But I don't know. The whole, like, in-between thing freaks me out. Like, people could still be here. Or if they're not actually people, they're scarier things. That just gets me, like, spiraling down a hill. So I just think I never really believed in it. Okay. And then I started to have freaky things happen to me. And I would justify them because I had three cats. So Uh, every noise can be explained by a cat. Yeah. Um, Growing up, we grew up... In the middle of nowhere. My driveway is a quarter of a mile long, or I don't even know. All you gotta say is you had dirt roads. Yeah. Like That's... My grab... My, my gravway. My driveway was gravel. Yeah. My parents have a woods behind their house, like huge, 40 acres of woods. We would walk back there uh, to just explore, you know, be a little... Let's go outside. It was the age before we had iPads. Right. But we would go back there and there was just pioneer stuff everywhere old relics, unicycles, everything you can imagine. From, like, what year? Like I mean, God knows. Well, like, when are pioneers from? <sighs> when people, like, like, first, Columbus? like, settled. What? Yeah, like, the, like the wagons. like Unicycle? I mean, yes, yeah, so like, wooden. Like, nothing. It was, like, very oh, old. There's, like, old crumbled remains of houses. There's, There's got to be a fib somewhere. There were no unicycles. I actually... Columbus was not riding a unicycle. Well, Columbus wasn't in my parents' backyard. But no, there was definitely like a little like settlement there. There's also in the other side of the woods, two creepy abandoned campers that are just chilling back there. So, I mean, there's clearly like history on wherever my parents' plot of land is. Wait, wherever. That stuff has to be like worth something. What? The pioneer stuff. Oh, we don't know. We used to have like scavenger hunts with it to like go find stuff in it for my birthday parties. Oh my God, I would have a... Field day. Oh, I have some pictures I think I can have my mom show you because we've dug. Or next time I drag your ass to Wisconsin, we can go back That's and look. So I funny. actually haven't been back there in 10, 15 years. Oh, my God. So I'd be really curious to see what we could find, too. Okay. I'm sure it's, like, grown up a lot, like, this 
vegetation, yeah. but we could we could find it. There would be creepy things that would happen at my house in Wisconsin, but we just never thought anything of it. And then I moved to Tennessee. Oh, yeah, Tennessee was a doozy. That, that house. house in Tennessee, I to this day can't explain some of the stuff that happened in that house. It never necessarily felt negative or bad, but the weirdest things I couldn't explain and I thought I was going crazy. Samantha moved in with me and she would make comments like, why were you up so late? Mm. Like, why were you stomping around the hallways at three in the morning? But like all the animals would be in your room. Yes. And I'd be sleeping and like stomping. I'm sorry. Dobby is six pounds. He can't stomp. No. And she does not believe like she's like, she would laugh when I would like explain some of the stuff that would happen in a nice way. Like she would hear me out, but she didn't necessarily believe. I don't know. Like, I feel like that's how I am. Like I, it's like, I don't believe it until it happens, but stuff has happened. Yeah, but how do you so explain like, it? I guess, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't, like, I simply don't know how to explain it. Yeah. Sam would be laying in bed, and she would get woken up by the upstairs neighbors, like, stomping around. There was no upstairs neighbors. You guys were upstairs. Yes. There's And there's literally not even, ew. like, an attic above her. Ew. Ew. Because for a while, she was staying at someone's apartment, and she would get always woken up by the upstairs neighbors. And so she was staying like some nights at my house, some nights there and she would get it mixed up. So she would uh, like wake up assuming she was at the apartment and then she would be at home, but she's like awake and staring at the ceiling and hearing it happen. Okay. Because obviously when you talk about this stuff, which is what we're doing now, you like attract it. So like, why did we pick the one episode that we're talking about the stuff to film at four in the morning? Well, we're past witching hour now. It doesn't matter. It's still terrifying when it's dark. Well, it'll be bright in about an hour and a half. I, I say all of that to say, I mean, I could go in hefty on a girthy story of what happened to me in Tennessee. Just know the house that I lived in, there has been two tornadoes in Tennessee in the past like 20 something years. Both tornadoes that came through Nashville tore that house down. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> so that's the third one that's gone up in this in that place. Did people die? I'm I'm assuming based on what happens in that house. What? Something I will say something in the house loves animals, like likes to keep them safe, but when it touches flowers they die. Okay, there is something. Can you explain just the dog food? Okay, I mean, I can. Explain the dog food. Okay. But like, do, do it like quick. I'll like... try my best to do it quick. I'm long-winded. Yell at me. Okay. So there was this one time I was going to get my hair toned, which if you don't know, is a very quick appointment. It doesn't yeah. take like all day. Like you're going to go get your hair done. And Duncan had just gotten over like a diarrhea spell. Yeah. So when I feed him, he's a very sensitive stomach. He will go to the bathroom and I was only going to be gone for maybe two hours. I didn't want to risk feeding him and then him, I mean, for the lack of better term, shitting all over the floor. Right. I don't want to clean it up. I'll gag. I'll throw up. I was standing in my pantry. If you guys want to go back and watch my house tour to understand the layout of what I'm explaining, you can do that. It's on YouTube. But I was standing in my pantry and the dog food bag was in the pantry. Yeah. No ifs, ands, buts about this. Didn't we like FaceTime? Yes. I I FaceTimed everyone because I thought I was going crazy. Bag in pantry remember that i was staring at it looking at it i said i'm gonna wait the two hours till i get home to feed him it was like 6 a.m i was gonna be home by nine i'm gonna wait and i said sorry duncan have a good day i'll be right back i shut the pantry door got in my car like walked down the hallway into the garage left all that was just to let you guys know it was a very conscious thing yes that she left the dog food in the pantry because like she was like you know what i'll feed him when i get back Mm -hmm. so it was very conscious i'm the first one to admit if i don't remember something yeah i'm unsure i'm like well i don't want to tell you i know that i did that i'm not sure if i did association yes and i have really like hard or i could get into high mental health problems but i knew this bag of food was in this pantry i'm set on that i come home and I had a Subway sandwich in my hand because I was hungry. Um, foot long or six inch? Foot long. And I probably mm. had like an extra six inch for tomorrow, in right. quotes, because it was really <laughs> yeah. for in 10 minutes. I had my Subway sandwich and I went to sit down to eat it, realized, what kind of mother am I? I'm eating before I feed my dog. That's Absolutely a, not. That's a terrible mom. I know. And so I got up to go to the pantry to get the dog food to feed Duncan. I opened the door. There's no dog food. I just kind of sat there and I looked at it at the ground. I believe at this point, it's been a while, so I don't exactly, I talked to everyone on the phone that day. I believe I was currently on the phone with my mom. Okay. I believe. It was my, my, it was either my mom or my sister. I was talking to my mom. I'm going to say my mom because that's what I think. I said, mom, the dog food's not here. And she's like, what do you mean? 
I said, when I left, I was staring at the dog food bag. Like it was eyeballing me. I know it was in here. It is not in here. And the pantry door was still shut. Right. And so she's just like, well, I mean, you must have forgot. I look around, right? And so, of course, I don't trust my brain. So I'm walking in circles in my house looking for it. The living room. I went upstairs. Plus, like, guys, it's a big-ass bag of dog food. Oh, that, yeah. No, it's like a 60-pound bag of dog food. Like, you can't misplace it. No, 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 no. no. It's like a little petite little bag. No, it's a big, girthy, 60-pound bag of dog food. I'm searching. I check my kitchen, my living room upstairs. I finally go out to the garage. So I walk past the pantry into the garage. I'm looking around. I turned to my mom and I said, someone stole my dog food? Yeah, you thought you I didn't even think a ghost. Never questioned, like, not even a thought in my head, was it paranormal or anything? I said, mom, someone robbed me and just stole the dog food. Because nothing else looked wrong. Which I would be fine with, honestly. Like, I mean, it's yeah, like they that's needed weird. it. But it's like they needed it. Like, but how yeah. did you know it was in there? Yeah. I don't know. Questions. So many questions. At this point, I was convinced there was somebody living in the attic because it was a brand new house. Yeah. So I was like, mom, like they're actually here and they're like trying to like tell me that they're here. And they have a dog. <laughs> right. And they need to feed it. Like, how do I help? Um, and so I'm walking around and she's like, check to make sure nothing else is missing. And so I then turn back around to go inside. I finish checking the garage. I open the door and from my garage door, you can see my t- into my living room. What'd you see? I kind of get goosebumps sometimes. Well, at this part, I was for sure I was getting robbed. There was someone in my house. The dog food bag. The 60-pound dog food bag. Yes. The dog food bag was placed in the most proper way you could ever imagine it. No lines, perfectly folded in the middle of the living room floor. As if someone, like, took it, shook it out, and placed it there. (laughs) I looked at my mom, or FaceTime, so I looked at her. I'm getting, there's somebody in my house with me right now. I'm going to die. Because at this point, it was, like, a huge ordeal like where is the dog yeah i was like so losing my mind because i have a lot of like my brain does not work a lot and i have a long like literal like physical health things with my brain that we can maybe talk about one day if it's relevant (laughs) but i was concerned for myself that it had gotten worse essentially i was like i don't remember this like i don't like but i've been on the phone with my mom this entire time she watched me check the living room. Yeah. She watched me do all these things and it wasn't there. And then I'm like, dog food bag? This is just so like weird. And so my mom's only reaction is, well, feed him. Like, he needs to eat. Well, yeah, I mean, at that point, like what? Well, yes. So I didn't move the, I'm on FaceTime. From this moment on, there is always somebody on FaceTime. None of this has happened by myself not talking to someone. Right. I feed Duncan, but I didn't move the bag from the living room. I hung up with my mom, called my sister, started telling Megan it while I was sitting on my couch with my back to the food bag. I showed Megan everything. My sister's name was Megan. And then I sat and I was facing away from the bag, almost as if I was like on the couch right here, facing out and the bag was behind me. Randomly, Megan goes, where'd the bag go? I said, what do you mean where'd the bag go? I don't, I feel like no one's going to believe me, but I have you, Megan, my mom, and Jenica that were all on the phone with me that day. Yeah, because you called me right after. Yes. Oh, it was a line. Because like I couldn't. When one person couldn't be on the phone anymore, next person <laughs> had to step in. I couldn't go through this alone. Megan tells me the bag isn't there. A part of me, the logical side, I've always had this extremely logical part to my brain. It, there is somebody in the house. Oh. Like, logically. Right. It's a 60-pound bag of dog food. How does it get picked up without there being a girthy man in the house to pick it up and like lift it around. Like Gerald moves that bag for me. I don't touch it. And I was on the phone. So at that point I could rule out, I was blacking out (laughs) because that was, that was on the table. No, you had two witnesses at this point. Yes. I was very much like considering my own mental state, but I had witnesses, whatever. So then I stand up and I start looking for this dog food because where the fuck did it go? Like where'd it go? I'm checking everywhere. Everywhere. Couldn't find it. Megan then goes, well, did you check the pantry? <laughs> but the pantry door. Which is hilarious because Megan knows you were on the phone with her the whole time. It was right behind you a second ago. Now it's not. But like, she's like, maybe they put it in the pantry. They. But, but the pantry door never opened and closed. Keep that in mind. It's still closed. There's a bigger picture here. I guess. I mean, I'm sure you can fucking guess what happens next. The food bag's in the pantry. That's hilarious. But How? <laughs> No, no, like, I'm like, like, how? And there's still, like, no explanation. Like, we, we wish we had an answer for you guys, but we don't. So Megan's response, which is a logical response. Well, actually, at this point, I don't know if it was Megan or Jenica. Yeah. One of them can listen to this and tell me who it was, but it doesn't really matter. 
someone was on the phone. They asked me, is there anything else missing out of place? Anything that you can tell. Granted, in my house, that's kind of hard. Yeah. But I had just had it clean. Like, I had just cleaned it. It was very beautiful. I'm looking around, and I very quickly notice that the flowers are not on the counter anymore. And the only reason I noticed them so fast is because the day before I had went to Trader Joe's, I have a picture of these specific flowers on my phone somewhere. If I can remember to send it to Caesar, our editor, insert it of the flowers. And the date, not that that matters, but whatever. I had just found these flowers. I was really in my treat yourself era. Right. Get yourself your own little flower bouquet every week. And you were also in your single era. (laughs) Kinda. Well, yeah, a little bit. But that's a complicated way to. (laughs) Now I feel like you. (laughs) It's fine. Um. I start panicking looking for these flowers. I know that they were there this morning before I left. And I know that they were there when I first lost the dog food bag. Yeah. I'm looking around, looking around, can't find them anywhere. I go down the hallway that has the pantry in the garage and I catch a glimpse out of the corner of my eye. This is a glass door that led to a screened outdoor patio. You were on FaceTime with me at this point. Was I? Yes. This is because I knew I was on FaceTime for a certain part. Okay. And it was this part. So then you may be the one that asked me where the flowers were. Or if I had missed anything else. I could have been, yeah. Because I think it was the same call. I don't know why I would have ended it while I was looking. Um, I just know it was somebody. I know there was four of you that day. (laughs) That's all I know. I turn to the left to look out the door and seated, sat, don't know the proper grammar. Seated. I dropped out of college. In the middle of that patio was the vase of flowers. No water, drained completely, and they were dead. The brand new flowers that I got yesterday. They were dead? They were dead. I see. I forget these stories. Dead. And I got them yesterday. The best part, the door to the patio was locked. That is crazy. That's a good story, though. Want to know what I found out? What? Those flowers, extremely poisonous to animals. Oh... Didn't feed the dog. So this ghost. And saved my animals from the poisonous flowers. But why did they die when you touched them? Don't love that. Oh, ew. I know. Sam. So and then, and then Sam moved in right after that and started experiencing stuff too. So I knew I wasn't crazy. But that is just one of a handful of stories that I have. That is probably top two weirdest things. Don't know how to explain them that has ever happened to me though. Yeah, that's no, that's crazy interesting. So that's my spooky story. My spooky story okay. is I actually did a video on it back in the day when I mm-hmm. made my spooky videos where my grandpa, he passed away when I was young. And then when we were moving into our new house, we moved from Staten Island to Long Island. My mom was in the living room and it was actually my dad's dad, but my mom was like, just give us a sign that this is the right house, okay. you know, that we're moving into. And it was 1998. So she had a Polaroid camera. <gasps> my birthday. Yeah. So she took a picture of the living room and when the Polaroid printed my grandpa was standing in the sliding glass door and then also like it was kind of like his silhouette like a glare Mm -hmm. like a glowing silhouette and then in the like glare on the floor like from the sun was like a detailed 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 picture of his face which is crazy and like there's a whole video on my uh, youtube channel about it i show the picture and everything if you're interested you could go just type in like andrew tmi grandpa polaroid or something i don't know as like heartfelt as that is that's terrifying no yeah um i i, I don't like to get into it i hardcore saw my grandpa when i was young i just I, you've told I don't, me that before i don't believe other people when they say it so i'm not gonna give uh-huh. my story but um my parents wound up going to john j edwards which he was like the it medium like he spoke to ghosts like or spirits whatever mm-hmm. My dad was not a believer. They did not believe him, but he did not believe him. But um, it turns out when they went to him, he was like, by the way, like your son really did see your dad, which they never said anything about it. But he said, your son really did see your dad. And the reason why he came to him is because he was the youngest and he spent the least time with him. And so that's why. But I was never able to go upstairs to my grandma's house again, even until I was in my 20s. Like, never, because I was terrified. And then... When my grandpa passed away, my mom wrote him a note and put it in his, like, suit pocket when they buried him. John J. Edwards read the note word for word to my mom. I guess that's not creepy. That's kind of nice, but it's, like, also kind of creepy. No, that's creepy. Yeah. But nice. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, you don't know if you should feel comforted or terrified. Like, it's nice to hear about, but, like... I do think I'd haunt you. You would haunt me? Yes. Why? Why would I not? Oh, my God. I would make your life a living hell. 
But you'd have to know it's me. It's terrifying. You're going to tell me after like the initial boo. You wouldn't like laugh with me? No, I would not. But, what but, if I sat there and was like clear as day talking to you as a joke and like joking with you? I'd be like, you're never going to believe what it's like. Are you transparent? Sure. That's spooky. That's scary. No. If you were sitting there like that, maybe a little better. You would rather a full fledged me come at you? I mean, you could lose the chicken suit, but as long as you weren't like transparent. However, I do agree with you where I would haunt the shit out of you. It would be so yes. much fun. But it's sad because like... If you were doing it to me, it really would ruin my life. Like, but I, would, I don't understand that. I would be actually terrified. But I would have to do it to you, too. So, I get it. Just please don't. <clears throat> I'm going to. Sorry. And I'm going to make it so fun. Well, since we shared our spooky stories with you, it's time for you to share your spooky stories with us. A.K.A. We already asked you on Instagram. So, if you don't follow the famous Instagram, you're missing out. Mm. You could be a part of this and a lot of other fun segments. On this podcast. Yeah, and also, oh, you yeah. can't be a part of it if it gets canceled. So if you are listening on a streaming um, platform, give it a five star. Get, leave it a nice review. If you're on YouTube, give it a thumbs up, comment, all, all the, the engagement. Things. You guys know what to do at this point, okay? Tell your mom, your grandma, your dad, your best friend, your great uncle. They get it. Okay, here we go. Be ready to be spooked. Have a blanket or something. Okay. My cousin moved into her first college house after the dorms for Halloween. They all had a party. The alcohol was under the sink as the party ran out. She went to go grab more. Okay. Okay, reasonable. This was when someone pushed her as a joke, but her head went through the wall. What? Fully through the wall. Like, imagine now you're looking in the wall. Under the sink was a tunnel (laughs) from the prohibition. It was dark and went for miles. What? Where it led to a field. After this day, a group decided to crawl through. Couldn't be me. You no. could not pay me to get in that tunnel. Hell no. Spiders? No, no, no. So, at least my concern. Oh. <laughs> yeah. When they got to the field, there were rings of dead animals that circled the exit. Dead mice and other creatures with their heads all pointing in. What? Mm-hmm. When they pulled it up on Google Maps to get home, the field didn't exist. No exit or entrance that pointed them in the direction to get home. They walked for miles till they found a road where they finally were able to get signal to call for a ride. When they got back in the home, more rings of dead bugs and spiders were all around. Okay, when we say rings, what do we mean? I'm confused. I'm, the way I picture it yeah. is like they're all like in a circle. Ew. Pointed no. in. Oh, no, no, no. Worst of all, their pet cats were dead in the living room in a circle, heads pointing in. When they got back? That's giving, like, demonic. I don't love that at all, actually. I, I feel like, My how, cats, how am I supposed to believe that? That's crazy. The way I would start fighting the demons... Because you killed my cat. She, oh, everyone, whoever, whatever demons are listening, she said it, not me. I'm double fist in it. Oh, not me. I'm like, do you want to blow, do blow job? Like, I don't, <laughs> like, uh, no. <laughs> Anything, like, for real. You wouldn't fight the demons if they killed Levi? Oh, if they killed Levi? Yes. Yeah. I would be f- punched in the air. Yeah, no, I'd be really sad. Like, I don't, you can do whatever to me. I, I'm trying to, like, be nice to the demons. I'm like, yeah, I'd be sad. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't fuck around with that. No, I'll, I'll. I'll kill them again. <gasps> Not that they were ever alive. Should I, I be saying that about demons? Yes, because I have Jesus Christ and he protects me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm staying quiet on that one. I mean, they can't hurt me. Oh. <laughs> they already try to get me when I go to bed, okay? Yeah. And guess who protects me? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Tr- Trisha, come you. on. We love you, Jesus. Trisha, join in. I know you're watching. Why she aren't you singing? She follows me. She's going to be watching because of you. But, okay, that has me spooked. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how I would react in that situation. I'm hoping that one of these is less creepy. This one, I feel like, is kind of giving your story a little bit. Okay. My uncle on my mother's side was diagnosed with a brain tumor at the age of five. Uh He went through all different kinds of treatments, but ultimately nothing would shrink the tumor or slow down the progression. 
He was unable to live on his own because he needed daily medications and was unable to take care of himself. So he stayed with my grandparents, his parents. Around age 21, they placed him in hospice care. At this time, he was unresponsive and in a coma-like state. One morning, my mom was at the house spending time with him when my mom went to the restroom. And while she was washing her hands, she saw my uncle walk down the hall in the mirror behind her. My mom ran to check on him and he was still in his bed. Oh. The crazy part of this is he had been immobile for years and it was impossible for him to get out of the bed. My uncle passed away the next day. My mother, I have goosies. Me too. Like my whole body just got goosebumps. My mother believes his spirit had left his body before he physically passed away. I don't know why reading Me that. Too. Like my whole body just like touched like everywhere. Well, that sounds weird, but <laughs> your body <laughs> is touching everywhere in certain places. Um I, re- I truly believe that, like, goosebumps mean something more than just your cold. I'm going to get scared. And I know, like, it's nice, but, but that, no. No, that is very sweet. Like, that Ugh. is, like, comforting to know that you get to, like, move on to somewhere else. I'm scared. <laughs> well, that means, like, he wasn't suffering in the end. Like, death does not sound fun. And he wasn't there for it. That's nice. Okay. I think it's nice. No, it is nice. I'm just, I'm... S- and the fact that I got goosies, like, what if he was listening and he was like, yeah, that's it- my story. Not ill. I'm sorry, but I'm. <laughs> this one's like that's my. <laughs> no, it, I look when my when I saw my grandpa like walking up the stairs and everything. Yeah, and that's I'm, I'm like I feel it kind of reminds me of your story. Yeah, I. Uh, Granted, he was already passed on, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's scary. It is kind of a little scary, a little spooks, a little spooks me goots. Should but I? Is that I all for the story? I'm pretty sure that's all of our stories, and that's pretty much. Do you have any um? Do you have any irrational fears? I have a fear. I know yours. Well, I have a fear, everybody, and I don't think it's irrational. It is. But, well, even you started getting spooked by it now too. I kind of. You know, I think it's more like cool. I kind of persuaded you. I'm not spooked. Like it can't beat me. Okay, everybody. Well, my irrational fear. Are you sure you want to say it out loud online? Yes, it's bamboo. And hear me out, okay? Before you click off the podcast, look bamboo. Look it up, people. It, it, it's factual. Once, like, it's planted somewhere, it never stops growing. Like, dig it off. No, no, yes, you, you they could. can't. You no, could. no, they really can't. It, you it, can't. The pandas eat it. The, the pandas are really good for stopping because they eat it at a rapid rate. But bamboo Me, can like grow. French fries. Bamboo can grow a foot overnight, and it spreads like wildfire. That's why, like, when when it's planted somewhere, they say like you really need to. I think at this point, like, you could get in, tr- in trouble or fined if you plant it, like, in certain places. I might be making that part up. But once you plant it, it's almost impossible to get rid of because it spreads so rapidly that you think you're removing it all, but you're not. And just as high that it grows up, it grows down into the ground. So it's nearly impossible to dig up, Samantha. Okay? And you want to know what? Bamboo can grow through... St- I'm, I'm yelling. I'm sorry. Bamboo can grow through steel. Mm-hmm. So they actually used to use it as a torture method mm-hmm. where they would tie people's four limbs like outward so the people were like stretched out and they mm-hmm. would plant bamboo under them and then it would slowly grow through them. And when I say slowly, it can grow a foot overnight, mm-hmm. Samantha. That's terrifying. It's and only terrifying if it's underneath you. You're never going to have bamboo going through your back. No, no. You want to know what else is terrifying? You like your house? Okay. Oh. Well, the, the bamboo that the neighbors planted in their backyard, yeah, give it a week. Okay. okay. It's going to be growing through your fucking living room. All I'm hearing is free landscaping. Le- no, you're going to have to relocate, bitch. No, it's fine. No. You're I'll done. just start eating it. It can go in my soup. It's stronger than steel. I'm stronger than bamboo. Not much more I can say about it. Well, I I hope I, you know, I, I hope I brought a little more awareness to the bamboo pandemic we have going on and everyone, you know, can be a little bit more careful when you're buying your little fucking bamboo plants for your win for your windowsill in the kitchen, okay? It's it's going to grow out of those little pots. You're afraid of bamboo and you're not afraid of Yellowstone. No, Yellowstone is kind of spooky too. No, kind of. You think that like the bamboo is going to end the world before Yellowstone is? No, I'm I'm not scared of bamboo ending the world. Well, eventually, you know, maybe <sighs> give it, <laughs> it well, it's going to take over. No, not as long as we keep the pandas. Well, um, they eat it. I'm more scared of bamboo, of like, you know, in the neighborhood. It's going to grow toward you real soon. There might be different kinds of bamboo. Like we might have, like, genetically changed the bamboo that you see in people's yards and stuff. I, 
I think you're secretly just scared of it and you're trying to comfort yourself. But No, I and I'm not. But I think I have to be able to keep you calm on your fears the same way you keep me calm with mine. But mine aren't irrational. Like Yellowstone's something you should actually be afraid of. <laughs> it's not I, why are you laughing? It's not funny. No, yeah. No. Yeah. I, take it serious. I am. I know. Like Yellowstone is spooky. It's the, go ahead, you can repeat after me if you want. Like a little class. The biggest volcano in the world. Wanna say it? Yeah, but so you can help understand how scary it is. Do I have to have the underbite when I say it too? Oh, you fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, the U.S. is simply planted on top of the largest mega volcano in the entire planet. Yeah. The last time it erupted, right? Only thing that survived on the entire planet are the little itty bitty microorganisms at the bottom of the ocean that like survived off of the heat vents mm. because they didn't need sun to survive because it coated the entire planet in ashes and forced it into a volcanic winter in which all life died and restarted. There's one place in Africa that is your best bet if it were to happen. If you were to take all the lava that's going to come out and spread it evenly across the United States, it would cover the entire United States in like 10 inches of lava or something. Um, you just, you're obviously your best bet's Europe, but you're still going to die just slower. I'd rather go out in the first wave. I'm not really looking to survive the apocalypse. I just think that like you see bamboo on your way to 7-Eleven, but like you don't see Yellowstone. The, the scariest things usually aren't right in front of your eyes. They're the things that you just assume aren't, I mean, they're, it's just the earth. Like there's just volcanoes. Like it's fine. No, like it's made to kill us. Like it, the, the earth can simply with the way we've been treating it overdue for a reset button it's gonna simply say yeah i'm done try again reset us yeah. back to the fucking organisms at the bottom of the ocean but all of the billionaires have a bunker we're both so passionate about our fears <laughs> there's a bunker in africa somewhere i forget exactly which country it is in and if you have enough money you can buy yourself a little spot or if you're important enough like political leaders taylor swift me you can get a spot in this bunker and essentially the purpose of that bunker is for when yellowstone explodes and maybe like that's like so funny because like okay go in the bunker but then for what but like, then what you know how long it would take to be okay to come back out of the bunker and that's like, like just take me out i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm so sorry i'm gonna say it but billionaires are ugly so like i'd love to see the repopulation there well <laughs> as long as taylor swift and travis kelsey are there they're fine oh. because i'm sure he gets like the free pass to go yeah anyway <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you. That was the most unhinged podcast we've ever filmed, I think. I feel like we were a little bit corny. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's so funny. Yeah, that was funny. That was a good one. Uh, only visual. Get it real. Oh, yeah, they're not going to Only get visual it people all. will get that joke. Anyway. If you know, you know. We will see you guys in episode five, five baby. Next Monday. Be there or be a whore. And... Five stars, thumbs up, give it a thumbs up, send it to your grandma. Well, everything, you know what to do. We love you. Goodbye. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. We've been talking for so long, I don't know how to say goodbye. I, I said it like four times. Okay, see you then. Bye. <laughs>